Hey everyone, welcome to Arizona Drone. My name is Rich Sharpentier. I'm Greg Riverdio. And I'm also known as November 1 Zulu Zulu Foxtrot. That is my ham radio license. And I have been a ham operator now for oh, almost 20 years. That's crazy. That's, and, that's a lot. And um, today we're going to be talking about radios, radio traffic, and air traffic control. Yeah. And the reason I wanted to bring this up is because I've, for some reason, recently on several forums that I was on, there were a lot of questions about radio communication. It just feels like that topic was pretty hot. So I wanted to bring up the topic and kind of discuss radio usage, what we can and cannot do as drone operators, and uh, what you should be using a radio for. So tell them a little bit what we use the radio for when we uh, fly around the Dallas, because we're really close to an airport. We're within a mile, um, two, two miles. Well, where we usually fly uh, on a direct line, I've measured it, is around 3.8 oh, miles. Okay, three miles. So we're so, pretty close and we, we have a lot of traffic. Actually, Prescott is one of the top 50 airports uh, in the country for traffic because we have two flight schools and one of the flight school, Ember Riddle, has a ton of traffic. So we always listen to the radio, but tell them about the radio you have and how we use yeah. it. So as a ham radio operator, I've got a lot of different radios, but I recently picked up a new Yezu handheld. Um, now, what's awesome with a lot of ham radios out there, you can buy one without having an amateur radio license, but you need a license to use it. But there's nothing against you listening in on traffic on any channel. So on ham radio repeaters, um, you can listen in. Uh, that same radio allows me to listen to emergency services. And in another band on that radio, I can listen to ATC. So looking at Sky Vector and pulling up my uh, sectional charts, I found out right away uh, the channels for the um, uh, Love Field Tower. And so when we go out and we're doing a larger project, that ham radio comes along with us so that we can actually listen in and know where the planes are around us. Yep. And so before you do that, I highly recommend that you go online and find what the pattern looks like for the airport. And so you have a better understanding of where you'll be flying and if you'll be close to the pattern. So then you can get a good idea of what the traffic is in the pattern. Now, I'm used to it. I've done this for many years, so I can listen to the radio and get a good image. But it takes a little bit of time to practice where you can find um, when somebody's doing a, a base report or a downwind report or listening to the tower telling them or somebody is coming inbound to the airport. So with enough practice, you can listen to the radio and then look up and say, oh, that's the airplane that just called in. And that's where they are and that's what they're going to be doing. And there won't be any factor for us. Most of the time, they're not because we're pretty far enough from the airport that they're at a thousand feet by the time they get to us or more. But it's a good practice. But we also do have some low flyers around here. Um, this is Arizona. This is fire season we have some uh, really dry conditions that are extremely concerning to all the residents here. And we've already had a fire in the area recently, and we've had the slurry bombers and helicopters coming over. One of our favorite places to fly is the Granite Dells. We have Watson Lake. Guess what? Watson Lake is a place where they can actually resupply water. So um, sometimes we do have flights that are lower than they should be, but we can actually find out about that by listening into the ATC traffic. Second thing I want to mention with the ham radio that I have and all ham radios, um, the ATC bands are blocked for us transmitting on them. So we can listen in, but we're not allowed to transmit on them and it's locked out in the handheld and it's locked out for a reason. I have an FCC, Federal Communications, ham radio license. I don't have any kind of licensing for talking on FAA frequencies, so I am just listening in there. And while there are radios available to talk to the tower, Greg's going to talk a little bit about that. Yep. You can, uh, so you can purchase those, but uh, you as a drone operator, let's make this clear right now, is you're not allowed to talk on the radio. So, it, it, one, it takes a special kind of training to talk. Two, we don't want to be blocking the airways for other people that are using it. And three, it's just against the, against the FCC uh, regulation because you don't have a license to talk on that radio. Now, um, when I owned the flight school, when I was in charge of the flight school, we 
um, we used the radio and we had actually a license to use a special frequency and we had to pay for that and we had a special radio but even with our handheld radio one day we had an issue with an airplane that uh, that had a, a landing gear failure and we had to go close to the runway to listen and, and see the airplane as it was flying by and even then with the handheld radio that we had because we were not on the frequency that we paid for that we were approved for we could not use the radio so the only time, there's only one time when you can use the radio and it's somewhat legal is in case of an emergency. So if something is really close to happening, your drone just flew away and it's about to hit an airplane and you want to tell someone, then you can get on the radio and do this only as an emergency. Otherwise, not allowed. Yeah. And so bottom line, you know, there are handheld radios out there for us that we can listen in on ATC. Or we can look at expanded band radios like the particular Yezu. I think it was, um, I think mine's the 7DX or 7XD. Um, it's a nice, tiny little compact radio. I can listen in on so many different frequencies. And if you're interested, ham radio operation is actually fun. I got into it because I used to work in cellular telecommunications and I wanted to know what the radio frequency guys are doing. Similar to taking a 107 test, the test for a technician no-code um, in the ham radio world is pretty easy. So you can study it for about two weeks. If you know a little about electrical engineering, you're going to be ahead of the curve. And what's awesome is, you know, I actually have emergency communications in the area. I can monitor um, Prescott Fire and police. I can monitor air traffic control all in a little package that was only a couple of hundred dollars. So it's really worthwhile, especially if you're going to be flying near airports so that you can listen in on what's going on with air traffic. Yep. And I'll do a shameless plug right now because <laughs> if you don't know how to find out what the radio uh, frequency is for the airport that you're going to be flying at, I actually just released a airspace and, um, what is it, airspace? Oh, airspace and charts reading. Uh, course, it's four hours of lectures, and it's only ten bucks right now. So I'll put a link down there. It's I think it's I'm a little biased, yeah. but I um, think it's totally it's, worth it. <laughs> it's it's not a shameless plug. So as you guys know, I passed my 107 end of last August. Um, coming away from the class that I took, the class helped prepare me, but I still had a lot of questions about airspace because there's a lot more to it. So you can you can take a course to pass the test and you're still going to be lacking a lot of knowledge of what's going on in the airspace around you. So Greg's gone super comprehensive because that's what he does, <laughs> and um, it's really interesting. I got to say, the thing that I really dig is the, the extra work on doing the 3D models. That's, that was pretty yeah, nice. I've never like, actually seen this anywhere else, so you guys will be able to see the airspace in 3D and get a really good perspective and and I've used that with my students and then in the comments below you need to ask Greg to start making 3d models of the airspace around you it'll be it'll become a whole new industry for him and you'll never see him on this video again because he'll be making airspace it's actually not very difficult to do in uh in, no in Tom it's room. really hard to do it's right? really hard to do yeah but no so uh try the course again it's only 10 bucks and I think it's again it's four hours of classes so you pay 250 an hour for uh, for, for a full airspace. For a full airspace course and yeah. reading the chart, not only the airspace, but it shows you how to read the chart. So, all right. So, as always, guys, fly safe and have fun and don't go jumping on the ATC's uh, bandwidth. Yep. We're not, we're not supposed to be there unless we're licensed. Yep. And practice, practice. It's, you you got to keep listening to it because it takes a while to understand it. So. All right. See you guys. See you on the next episode.